Welcome to Covenant Presbyterian Church. We are glad you are here with us to worship together in person or online. I'm Dick Christensen and I will be serving as your lay leader today. Everything you need to say or sing is projected on our screens. If you would like a full printed liturgy, the ushers can provide you with a large print bulletin. The offering box is located just inside the door at the rear of the sanctuary. We will bring these gifts forward later in the service and dedicate them to Christ's mission. Prayer requests and information cards are located in the pew rack in front of you. If you'd like to make a prayer request, fill out the slip and pass it to me during the opening hymn. We'd love to pray with you. If you're new to Covenant or have updated contact information, please use the same card and we will be able to get in touch with you. You can read more about Covenant, our current and upcoming activities, and see photos of what we do here by going to our website at wdmcovenant.org, by visiting our Facebook and Instagram pages, or by checking out our YouTube channel. We will now have the ringing of the Trinity chimes, followed by the call to worship. When they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus gave two disciples a task. Go into the village over there. As soon as you enter, you will find a donkey tied up and a colt with it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that their master needs them. Now this happened to fulfill what the prophet said. Say to daughter Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the donkey's offspring. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the donkey and the colt and laid their clothes on them. Then he sat on them. Now a large crowd spread their clothes on the road. Others cut palm branches off the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds in front of him and behind him shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up. Who is this, they asked. It's the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Please stand as you are able for our opening hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, which is page number 196 in your hymnal.
God reconciles the word to God's self through Christ by not counting our sins against us. Christ knew sin for our sake so that we could become his righteousness. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins. O Christ, you entered the city as a poor man, not in style, but simply. Yet still you caused uproar and questions everywhere. You drew the expectations of a hungry crowd and brought buried conflicts to life. May we, who are sometimes swayed by the crowd's approval and who often avoid conflict for fear of its cost to us, hold fast to the gospel of peace and justice and follow faithfully in your way of compassion and solidarity with those who are poor and excluded wherever it may lead us. Look, now is the right time. Look, now is the day of salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Beloved siblings, children of God, may the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Please greet one another with a sign of peace. Peace. be with you everyone. This being Palm Sunday, we have a special gift of music this morning from the children's choir, so I'd like to invite all the kids to come on forward to sing for us.
God of mercy, you promise never to break your covenant with us. Amid all the changing words of our world, speak your eternal word that does not change. Then may we respond to your gracious promises with faithful and obedient lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. It would be on page 35 and 36 in the New Testament in the New, in the New Pew Bibles. Please follow along or read with me as I read. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when it was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on the left hand, You that are cursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? And he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of the Lord.
we parade in with the palm branches and we lay them at the feet, not of me, they just happen to be right there, but we lay them at the feet of the coming king as he processes into Jerusalem on a donkey, which is not as impressive even at the time as we might like to imagine it is. And so we have just barely started that story when we find ourselves wondering, wait, is this, is this what the good news really is? Is this what Jesus' ministry and life among us is really about? Friends, I'm not going to lie. These stories that we have been reading during the season of Lent have left me hungry, ambiguously good news. Good news that I don't have to, like, struggle and wonder and read for. And now, that good news is coming next week. So come back next week. But during this season of Lent, as we've been preparing for Easter, we have been listening to the stories that Jesus told shortly before he died. And reading these stories at this particular time puts them in a different kind of relief for me. Now, these are some hard stories that Jesus told, these parables that sort of take us outside of our own everyday experience and ask us to imagine and understand life. And we really like to stop that reading. We are to live when Jesus is not with us, or at least when it seems like Jesus is not with us, when we can't identify or recognize who he is or where he is among us. And during this season of Lent, we've been reading those stories and connecting those stories to life in Iowa today, which has a tendency to even more highlight the challenging bits of those stories, those resonances between Jesus' stories and the stories that we see, for 